families, we're so excited that you guys have tuned in to join us this week. We're so excited to just have a service with you guys, even though we can't be with you. So, the first part, the very first thing we're going to do, we're going to get some energy out. So I want everybody to stand up and get ready for some great worship. Feel the wonder, say his name, watch the darkness slip away, put your power on display, say goodbye to fear and shame. Revival. 
you guys enjoyed just getting some wiggles out and showing off some dance moves at your house. Hopefully you had a great time. Our next part is a Bible story. So we're gonna watch a quick video of a quick Bible story and then we're gonna dive into our lesson. So go ahead and take a seat and get ready for a great story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 21 through 32. When Jesus wanted to share something important, he often told a story to explain what he meant. Now one day the religious leaders were grumbling because Jesus chose to bring in outcasts and people who did things wrong. He hangs out with sinners and even like eats with them. Jesus knew their hearts. These men thought they were better than everyone else. So he told them the story of a man and his two sons. Now the youngest son asked for his share of his father's money and he took off. He spent his money on parties and all other stuff. But then the money ran out and he ended up at a miserable job feeding pigs while he himself starved. Desperate, the young son returned home, planning on begging for mercy and working as a servant. Instead, his father welcomed him with open arms and even planned a party for his lost son in his honor. Ultimately, seemed like a happy ending. But Jesus wasn't finished with the story yet. The older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. If Jesus were to tell that story to us today, it might sound something like this. The older brother, let's call him Will. He spent the entire day working hard, perhaps plowing up the packed dirt on a brand new field. Come on, Bessie, just... <clears throat> One more row. <sighs> Gotta finish before the light goes. As the sun slipped behind the hill, Will finished breaking the dirt on his last long row. I just need some water and a quiet meal and bed. Will trudged slowly back to the house and left Bessie in the barn with a bag of oats. If my slacker brother hadn't run off, I wouldn't have to work so hard. As Will neared the house, he was surprised to see the lights blazing from every window. What is going on? Will stopped, trying to make sense of all the activity and the music. Then the back door opened. One of the servants stepped outside to throw out a bowl of scrap. And she turned to go back inside. Wait. The servant paused. What's happening? It's just the party for your brother. The what for my what? You haven't heard? Your brother showed up this afternoon. Your dad had the fattest calf killed and roasted to celebrate. He is so thankful Jake's safe. A party? My dad is throwing a party? I'll let the family know you're back. What? No. No. I am not coming in. The servant wrinkled her nose. Whew. You want someone to run you a bath first? Leave me alone. The servant hurried back inside. Will paced as his exhaustion vanished and anger coursed through his veins. I work all day, every day. Has dad ever thrown a party for me? Will stalked back and forth, fuming as the back door opened up again. His father hurried out. Will, here you are. Well, look at that. You decided to remember I exist. Your brother is back. He's okay. Well, that is just fantastic. We're all celebrating, but it's not complete without you. Come on inside. Will turned and looked directly at his father, eyes blazing. All these years, I've worked nonstop for you. I've done every single thing you asked, and you never even given me a goat to have a party with my friends. You never said you wanted. This son of yours runs away with your money and wastes it like a fool. 
Then he shows up and you roast a fatted calf and throw a giant shindig. Will's father sighed, took a deep breath, and looked Will directly in the face. My son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours, but we had to celebrate and be glad. This brother of yours was dead for all we knew. And now he's alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. <sighs> Look, I'm real tired. I plowed the entire North Field. Well, thank you. I think I'll just go to bed. Won't you come into the party? Just for a few minutes? Will hesitated. He could see the people through the window, dancing, eating, full of joy. The light and the music called them. Please, Will. We don't know if the older brother ever listened to his father. We don't know if he ever forgave his younger brother. We don't know if he chose to go and enjoy the party. But what we do know is that if he stayed outside, he missed out on many good things. That's a great story. And we hear it a lot of times at church. And we often we think about the dad and the son and the great forgiveness that the dad had for the younger son that came back even though he spent all that money. But we want to take a different uh, look at this. We don't really focus too much on the older brother and what he might have been feeling or thinking. So I want you to grab your Bible or your iPad or iPhone or whatever you have your Bible on and turn to Luke chapter 15. We're going to start reading in verse 25. If you don't have anything, don't worry. I'm going to read it right to you. So here we go, friends. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed a fattened calf because he is back safe and sound. This is where we learn more about what the older brother was feeling. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you've never gave me even a young goat so that I may celebrate with my friends. We could see that the brother was really upset and he had every right to because he knew what the younger brother had done. He was disrespectful and he wasted all the money that his dad had given him. But let's see what the dad says back to him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Wow. For some of us, we're learning about forgiveness. We're thinking about this. This is hard. It would be hard for that brother to forgive him when he thinks of all the bad he did. And for some of us, Maybe there's somebody even in our house right now because we can't really go out. Maybe somebody's taken our toys or they use uh, the video games more than we get to use them and we get really angry. But we should be quick to forgive those around us. Jesus never told us whether or not the older brother forgave his younger brother or if he even rejoined the party. But we can think if he didn't forgive him and if he didn't get over kind of being hurt, he would have missed out on the entire party. He could have even missed out on having a relationship with his brother again. See, when we don't forgive, it can keep us from things. So we have a choice. We have to choose whether or not we're gonna forgive those around us. Now, we shouldn't forgive because we have to, but rather we should forgive and it should come from your heart because Jesus first forgave us, we should forgive those around us. So think about that this week. How can I forgive those around me when they make mistakes? And also think, how would I want to be treated when I make a mistake? Would I want them to forgive me right away? Or would I want them to ignore me or be mean to me? See, we have that choice, friends. So this week, let's work on forgiving those around us when they make mistakes. We love you. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for opportunities like this, Lord, that we get to come together as a church, Lord. We just pray, Father, that you would help all of us, Lord God, to just forgive those around us, Lord, when we get hurt. Father, we just pray, Lord, that our first response would be to forgive those around us just as you forgive us daily, Lord. 
We pray that everybody would continue to be safe, Lord God. And we pray, Lord, that you would just help these times to just be fun times at home with our family, Lord. We thank you, Father, for just being able to meet together as a church, Lord. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, friends, come back next week. We're going to have more church services for you to join us with. We love you and we can't wait to be back with you again. Have a good one.